Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with another Witch 3 video. This time, following on from my making money early game video, this is the late game version. Now, using the tips and tricks that you have in the early game version, such as selling alchemist powder and all those kind of things, you should have more than enough money to buy the regular Mastercrafted uh, stuff, so upgrading your regular Witcher gear to Mastercrafted and buying anything you need in the game. But when you get to the Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine expansions, there are a lot of other expenses. Uh, three major expenses, in fact. There are the Mastercrafted gear, as you can see there, those are the Ursine Mastercrafted swords, which you can upgrade to the Grandmaster versions in Blood and Wine, and that can uh, take you either 43k per set if you're buying everything, or if you watch my video on crafting it, still take up to about 20k per set, maybe a little less if you craft everything from scratch. So what we need to do is make as much money as possible to be able to afford those. There's also the Rune Right in Hearts of Stone, and all three levels of his upgrades will cost 30k. And there's also Covo Bianco which needs to be upgraded in Blood and Wine and that costs 14k in total. So there's some quite major expenses. So what we need to do is look at the here, you've got the crafting ingredients and the alchemy ingredients. And we can sell some of those and there are also other ways of making money in the game. And we need to be aware of what we can sell and what the things that we need to keep and how we maximise that. So first of all, if you've been saving up your florins and orins, you can trade those in. And you can see here I've only got 65 crowns in total. I have already paid for the rune right at this point because I had quite a lot of money throughout the game from using those previous tips and <clears throat> just being frugal with what you buy normally. But if you've not traded in your coin, you can do already. You can also do this throughout the game. So I'm going to trade in those coins and the uh, ratio that you get for the florins, I think it is, is 3 to 1 and the orange is 1 to 1. So I've got about 7,000 crowns and that's a good starting point. So hopefully you've got like a fair amount of money from using the tips from the early money video or anything like that. But here are some of the things that we can do to make sure that we get more. Now throughout the game I try and stash expensive relic weapons or just weapons and armour in general that I'm not using. I try and stash them because the Tucson armourers give better prices, especially the Master Armourers and the Grandmaster Armourer and the Master Blacksmith, they give much better prices than anywhere else in the game. So I've kept a load of armour and everything in here. Now bear in mind if you do it this way it will make your stash extremely slow. It, the more stuff you put in the slower it gets. But this is how I chose to do it. You can do it gradually through the game and just make multiple trips to the armour if you want. Now with the trophies, you'll lose the trophies when you go on to New Game Plus and so you only really need to keep one of each um, for like the 10% dismember, 5% from humans, 5% bonus for monsters and things like that. And the Swineherd trophy for your bonus gold. You should also have plenty of repair kits, so never use the armour or blacksmith to repair at cost, just make sure you use the kits, as you can see I've got loads there. Now gold and silver is quite valuable, but you also need gold and silver to make green gold when you're crafting the Grandmaster armour, and if you watch my video on that, it's cheaper to craft it from scratch, so don't be tempted to sell your gold and silver, try and keep it and dismantle it with the Grandmaster armour if you can. And you can see there I've also just kept like a backup of 5 to 10 of some of the items in case I find that I've sold too much of it and I need to dismantle those later on. You can also see on the left I had plenty of glyphs and runes. Never buy glyphs and runes, we'll come on to that in a minute, you should never need to do that. You should always find enough in the game and be able to upgrade them. Now for selling items, certain people give better prices and a lot of the best prices come in Toussaint. Now you pick up a lot of wine in Toussaint as well. Whilst you could use it to heal, I prefer to do that with potions and just sell the wine. So what I do is I have one item that I use as a point of reference. For me it's a pig hide because I know what everybody sells them as. So if a pig hide sells for 8 or 9 crowns, that's someone who gives a decent price. But you can see in Toussaint a lot of the innkeepers and merchants will, sit, will buy them for 11. And that shows that they are giving really good prices for things that you can sell. So you can sell a lot of your junk hides and the wines and things like that that you pick up and make extra money that way. So the people that give the good prices are the Flo Vive merchant, the Cockatrice Inn merchant, and the merchant here in the Tawny Grounds, and there's also one on the square near the Great Balls of Granite quest and the statue of Reginald. So these are some of the things we've got to upgrade. We've got the Corvo Bianco, and like I say, that costs 14k in total, and that gets some extremely useful things like the ability to convert mutagens and everything else. This is the merchant near the Reginald statue, and again, he's one of the ones that gives really good prices for selling junk items and things like that, so make sure that you sell to him. There's also a quest called Father Knows Worst, and if you do that quest and make sure that you don't incite the violence at the end of the quest so that all the brothers survive, Hugo, one of the brothers, comes back to this spot on the map, and he is the only merchant who will sell and buy everything at absolute full price, so like you can sell even arrows and things to him, so make sure that you unlock him. Uh, he only has five to six hundred crowns at a time, but make sure you do that. 
so you can sell things to him uh, intermittently. Now you see here I've taken everything out of the stash, it did take me like 45 minutes because my stash was so slowed down so if you're going to do it this way just bear, in, bear that in mind. But Joanna, after you've done the Master Armourer's quest, turns out to be a Master Armourer. And the Master Armourers are you should always do your dismantling with because they give twice as many components for a lot of the things that you dismantle. Now, the price for dismantling and the price for buying items from you are linked. Now, Joanna gives by far the worst prices of any of the Master Armourers, so don't sell things to her. But conversely, that means that she does give the best, she has the best prices for dismantling things. So what I'll do first is I will collect all of these things, you can see I'm enormously overloaded in my inventory and I'll just do a big bunch of dismantling at once. So anything that gives me dimeritium ore, if I feel like I need a bit more of that because you need a fair amount for the Grandmaster gears, uh, dimeritium ore, dimeritium ingots, you can dismantle things with her. So you can see there this sword that I dismantle costs about 440 to uh, 462 to dismantle but I get two dimeritium ingots from it and a ruby. Now that is much better price than buying the dimeritium ingots for like 1400 each. So you can, you know, dismantle some things and make sure that you get that. I also dismantle all of my things that would give gold, silver and especially green gold because those items are used for making or halcom which if you watch my crafting grandmaster gear video you need a lot of gold and silver and green gold to be able to make or halcom and enrich your dimeritium ore for making the grandmaster sets now you can see here that you can also uh, dismantle crafting components and things like that and you can also dismantle monster parts and again if you do it with a master armor you get more parts from it so you should try and do as much of this as possible with Joanna. You can do it for convenience with the merchants in Tucson, the blacksmith, the armourer and the grandmaster smith but they will cost more to do your dismantling so if you can be bothered go to Crow's Perch and do your, some of your dismantling with Joanna it will save you a bit of money in the long term but just don't sell stuff to her because she gives the worst prices. The same thing applies to armours if you've got stuff that makes rarer things that are useful like the cured draconic leather and dark steel ingot I dismantle that piece there and I get a fair few of those so you get two leather and that can be useful for making things later. Because Joanna has lower prices for dismantling, she also has lower prices for crafting. She can't make Grandmaster items, but for anything that's master crafted, like if you want to make greater glyphs of mending like I do, I will always try and make them with her because it can save you a significant amount of money because her crafting costs are lower. So if I want to make a greater glyph of mending or any rune or anything like that, I never make them from scratch, that's a big sunk cost. So you always make sure that you have some powdered pearl and feathers. You can get feathers from killing geese in Upper Mill and at Covo Bianco. And if I want to make a greater glyph of mending, I will make the lesser glyphs of infusion first and then craft it right up. So craft the lesser glyphs of infusion, four of those to make a lesser glyph of whatever you are doing. So like a lesser glyph of mending, make four of those. Then combine the lesser glyphs of mending into two of the regular glyphs and then combine two of the regular glyphs into the greater glyph. So if you do that and go through each stage and craft it from scratch it, it works out much cheaper than it does of, of making any, uh, buying them from a merchant. Uh, if you were to buy a greater glyph of mending from the um, rune right where you buy them from uh, it would cost you about 1400 crowns so it's much cheaper to craft things from scratch wherever you can. So try and do that wherever possible. Then I take my big load of things that I've got to sell and I sell them to the Master Armourer and the Master Blacksmith in Tucson. They're quite near the Grandmaster Smith. And then I sell the rest of it to the Grandmaster Smith. Now bear in mind, a quick tip is if you do sell everything to the Grandmaster Smith, it will fill up his inventory and much like the... Um, slow down that you get from your stash it will slow down his menu a bit as well which can be a bit annoying so if you have if you want to do it a different way you can sell things to the master smith and the master blacksmith they're next to each other in Tucson in the main city and then you can just keep going back to them and selling things a chunk at a time so that you don't overload the grandmaster smith's inventory that is something you can do so some of the things that you want to be selling to um, make some money, uh, there are the hides and everything else. When you've got a big stock of hardened leather and all those kind of things that you could use for crafting, when you've got a stock of those, you can sell the excess hides and everything else. And like I say, sell them to the merchants in Tucson and you will get more for those. So make sure you're selling them to those merchants. Now when we come to be looking at the Grandmaster Smith, you can look at what you can actually uh, craft with him and there are also ways that you can save money by crafting things from scratch now i have done another video on this uh, which we're going up at about the same time so i'll not go into it in too much detail but the enriched dimeritium and the infused lazard hides that you need for the grandmaster gear are extremely expensive the plates cost 4500 each 
a little bit more than that and the enriched dimeritium ingots cost about 2200 plus each so it's much better to make our helcom ore out of the gold and silver and nickel and everything else like we were saying there make our helcom ore by combining gold silver and nickel uh, gold silver and copper combine those into green gold then make the aura helcom ore from the green gold nickel and copper and then use the orihalcum ore and acid extract to enrich dimeritium ore and make the enriched dimeritium ore item which you can then combine to make your ingots and everything else so watch my crafting of the grandmaster gear video and that links to a fantastic uh, reddit post from leonard earl a couple of years ago which breaks down the cost of that so you can save quite a lot of money by crafting everything from scratch so as well as selling things to make money make sure that you're saving as much money as possible by doing your crafting uh, wherever possible instead of buying expensive items so that's a couple of things that we need to look at and so that's never buying runes or glyphs wherever you can craft them from scratch use repair kits instead of using the armor make sure that you're selling things to the grandmaster and mastercrafted uh, smiths in tucson and try and do your dismantling and creating of items with joanna because she's the cheapest there are also a couple other things that we need to take into account like the things that you can sell and just before I move on to that we'll just have a quick look here you can also make dimeritium from scratch and again I'll go over that briefly in the Grandmaster crafting video so whenever you're making things from scratch it will save you some money now you want to make sure that you are um, selling things to the um, people in Toussaint as much as possible you can't sell alchemy ingredients straight to the, the smiths or the armourers you can only sell them crafting ingredients but you'll find that there are quite a lot of crafting ingredients that will have built um, a great amount of through the game. So as long as you're keeping um, a good chunk of those in case you ever need them for crafting, you can still sell some of these. And you can see here that I'm going to uh, sell a few things like the powdered monster tissue. And one of the tips that you can do is, although you can't sell the alchemy ingredients directly, you can still make more money off them by dismantling them with the Grandmaster Smiths. And if you dismantle something, like if you dismantle an algal claw, claw or a drowner brain, you will actually get um, two of the regular items. So a drowner, claw, a drowner brain will make two monster brains and selling the two monster brains will get you a net profit because they will sell for more than it costs you to dismantle the drowner brain. So that's another way you can make money. Now you see here that I'm selling some of the crafting ingredients. You can sell dark pearls because I would never buy runes and I never have to create them because you pick up so many in the game. Those are the sword runes. I always have enough. So... I don't need those but I do find myself making glyphs from scratch um, because you have glyphs in your uh, armor set a lot of the time because you can only have an enchantment on the chest piece so I don't sell too many pearls try and keep some of those now with the actual gems and stones you can pick up a lot of those through the game and again sell those to the armorer and smiths in Tucson but you always want to keep some I try and aim to keep at least five or ten of each one because you do need them for some of the crafting like the manticore swords uh, they will need a ruby so you do try and keep some of those don't sell any infused dust because you need those to make en enhanced uh, infused slizard hides for your grandmaster so try not to sell those and there are certain things you'd never really sell like the copper and things like that that you need for dismantling and making into green gold for your master armor but you can sell things like uh, if you sell some of your dust that you pick up if i pick up a lot of dust then you can get quite a lot for those so that's like ruby dust and amethyst dust and things like that and then you can sell some of those and get some money as well so you should be able to build up a big chunk of money you can see here when you're looking at crafting the grandmaster gear and things like that another thing you can do is if you want you can use the manticore gear or manticore swords instead of the grandmaster if you need to save some money now the manticore gear in the regular game not in new game plus will have a lot lower cost of crafting and it also only needs regular dimeritium and items instead of the enriched dimeritium that the master crafted uh, grandmaster uses so although the man the manticore gear has sort of grandmaster level stats it's a little bit cheaper so for example my build i will sometimes use the manticore swords uh, if i don't feel like spending the extra money to make enriched dimeritium for the ursine grandmaster swords that is another thing to consider is if you check out my build video for the uh, rend tank and whirl uber build um, that one will only use the grandmaster chest piece uh, and it, it uses different boots trousers and uh, gauntlets so it's actually cheaper to use that build because we only need the Grandmaster chest piece you don't have to have the enriched dimeritium for the other pieces now this here is if you do need to make enriched dimeritium this is how you do it and again if you watch my full video for that you can make dimeritium ore into enriched dimeritium ore 
and then you can combine those into enriched dimeritium ingots and then combine some of the ingots into plates for when you are making the Grandmaster gear and it's much much cheaper to do it that way. There's a couple of other things that you also need to consider. You can get a couple of really good swords for free in Blood and Wine. The Hen Guider Sword, you should always do the first part of the Unseen Elder mission to get the key. And then even if you change your mind to go through the Fantasy World at the end of Blood and Wine, you still have that key. You can go back and get the Hen Guider Sword and that's a, a very powerful sword but you don't have to craft it. You also get Erendite for free if you fulfill the five virtues, um, so make sure that you do that. It does cost a lot of money to add sockets to Erendite though, so you might want to leave that until later in the game. Plus the earlier you get it, the more you have to level it up. So I hope you found those tips to be quite useful. Uh, one of the last things you need to do is that you can use the Swineherd trophy and equip that whenever you negotiate for contracts. And that will get you a little bit more money as well because that gives you a 15% boost, percent boost to your gold when negotiating. So there's a good few tips. I'll also be doing uh, some other Blood and Wine videos. So thank you for watching and please leave any comments that you need. And like and subscribe if you found the video useful and enjoyed. And thank you very much and enjoy yourself on the path. Thank <laughs> you.